Okay, I will call the uh, Community High School District 128 Program and Personnel Committee meeting to order. While we will defer our um, pledge to yeah, the regular yes. board meeting uh, uh, that follows. Uh, real quick invitation for public comment. Anyone going to uh, speak tonight? Okay. Uh, and before we move on, we have a uh, student recognition we would like to uh, uh, do right now. So, Brian, or turn over to Tom. 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 Dr. Right. Well, good evening. I'm Tom Glennis, the always proud principal of Liberty Bell High School. And the big uh, deal, right? You're, you're a big deal, aren't you? <laughs> I, I'm not <laughs> quite the big deal. deal. <laughs> Ethan is the big deal that we're going to talk about tonight. So. Uh, I'm uh, delighted to be here to present to the board um, and our community uh, one of what I believe a, a student who's going to go down as one of the best athletes in Libertyville history, uh, Mr. E Ethan Burkhart. Um, we're going to hear all about his track accomplishments. Uh, Ethan is a rising senior at Libertyville High School, and um, can you guess how many state champion medals he holds already as a junior? How many does he have, Tom? Nine. I'll say nine. Close. That's going to say three a year. So he's going to check me here. We've got four first place medals, state champion medals in track, one second place medal, and one third place medal. Wow. wow. Yeah. Five. Oh, up. wait a minute. Short of Five <laughs> state championship medals, nice. and that's why I should let the coach do the talking about the track. But in addition to everything you're going to hear about him as a member of our track team and his accomplishments, Ethan is, we went out for lunch today, um, and he said his summer's about to get busy because uh, this weekend he is uh, running a marathon up in uh, Minnesota, in Duluth, Minnesota, the Duluth Marathon. And then he goes to track camp at U of I. It's the, one of the premier adaptive sports uh, camps in the country. And then he goes to Buffalo, where he pursues his other sport, which is sled hockey. And he does a week-long camp in sled hockey. And then he tries out for the US national team developmental squad with the goal of one day potentially being a member of the US national sled hockey team. And the US, the United States, when I was asking him who are the powerhouses in the world in sled hockey. The United States is the powerhouse, aren't we? So Ethan is a very talented athlete, and he's also just an all-around great student. Um, does very well at the high school. We're so proud of him. And I'm going to let his coach, Stuart Mendelson, our varsity boys track coach, talk a little bit about some of his five state championships in track. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Um, Ethan has been a state qualifier uh, all three years so far in his high school career. Uh, he's qualified in the 100 meter, 200 meter, 400 meter, and 800 meter of the wheelchair uh, division. Uh, freshman year, uh, he was just getting excited to see what he could do. Uh, and then sophomore year, he became state champion in the 200, 400, and 800, took runner up in the 100. Uh, last year, when he did make state and set those state championships, he also is the current record holder for the 200, 400, and 800. Uh, and then this past year, um, Ethan, in even hotter weather with a strong south wind, um, mm -hmm. although he did not make state champion in the 200, he still uh, became state champion in the 400 and 800 meter uh, events. And uh, Dr. K, uh, his work ethic, and he's a workhorse. Uh, at the start of track season, it's the longest sport. Uh, we start at the end of January for indoor season. Um, and uh, parents are nice enough that we get his rollers inside our field house, and Ethan is just working out on a stationary roller, doing his workouts. He goes to CrossFit after practice, get his lifting in, um, and then outdoor season comes, and it's exciting if the weather holds up and we get out on the track, and uh, from there, it's you know smooth sailing. Can you talk a little bit about um, how the IHSA does the unified um, team competition for this? Yeah, so what was, what's great is um, IHSA has combined uh, the wheelchair events with the regular tra track events. So uh, Ethan competes uh, at the same respective events of the runners that day. So um, Ethan, for example, the 200 meter, they will have Ethan and all the wheelchair athletes go in their 200 meter race. 
right after, then it's all the finalists from the running events. Uh, they include it. And what was really nice last year, uh, unfortunately, Ethan was our only qualifier for state this year. Last year, uh, when we recognized Ethan and Alex last year, uh, their combined efforts brought us a state runner up combined trophy uh, that we recognized for Ethan and Alex's accomplishments. So uh, hopefully next year, Ethan, we can get some more uh, athletes down besides you and maybe bring home another combined state trophy. Ethan, would you like to say Yeah, let's hear from <laughs> Ethan. <laughs> I just, I had a blast doing it this year. And, I don't know, it's really it. Ethan, is, cool. is this your guest that you brought with the meeting? And I, I have a feeling that she has had something to do with uh, getting you to this point. Mm -hmm. So we, as a board, not only recognize Ethan for your accomplishments and your excellence, and we thank you for your contribution, but we know that he wouldn't be here without you. Oh. Thank you. And what I found out in the hallways, he gets all his athletic ability from mom. <laughs> 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 And Ethan is a very proud big brother. His um, brother is a junior um, who is a hockey player, and he has a sister who's an eighth grader at Highland who is a very uh, passionate female hockey player. And so we've got uh, another wildcat and one coming down the road. So, and as I told mom, keep them coming because we're <laughs> proud of all of them. Thank you. Thank you. So let's um, yeah. All right, let's uh, call to order the regular business meeting for the Board of Education for Monday, June seventeenth. Uh, if I could ask everybody to stand, please recite the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everybody. Roll call, please. Jim Baston. Here. Don Carmichael. Here. Pat Rudy. Here. Lisa Essel. Here. Kevin Huber. Here. Karen Lundstedt. Here. Casey Rooney. Here. Okay, so everybody's present. Um, tonight, um, we will open it up for public comment. Um, we've already done the student recognition. That will be part of the tape of the meeting. Um, let's see, uh, we, I, I just have a couple of brief comments on the President's report. We will get the Superintendent's report with a number of updates. We'll approve the consent vote agenda and have brief updates from facilities and finance, um, program and personnel. Anything from CEDAW? Just brief. All right, brief mention of CEDAW and ISB Jim? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. And our updates from the committees will be brief as we've already reviewed them in detail earlier this evening in the committee meetings. Okay? All right. Anybody from the public who'd like to speak? All right. Seeing none. Um, you know, just a couple or one comment really from, the, from myself. I just want to say thanks to everybody for the year end activities. I know how busy that is. Um, it was just another great finish to the year. Uh, the last couple months we've had some outstanding student recognition, which is phenomenal. Um, but I think both graduation ceremonies were also just a big success. I know I was at um, LHS, and that was a lot of fun. And I watched the BHHS on the video. It looked like it was great. So I just want to say thanks. I know that's a lot of hard work um, to plan it and organize it and get it all done. And I think, you know, hard to believe another year in the books. Amazing. You know? Um, and another really good year. I mean, I think if I look back on this year in particular, we got a lot of wheels moving this year. Um, so we got some real momentum going on a whole bunch of fronts. Uh, I, I got to tell you, um, I'm increasingly impressed with everything you guys have done with Daring. All right, I've held that example up a couple times with my previous employer. Mm -hmm. um, because it's the first time I've actually seen one of these things actually start to stick uh, in, in a long time. So I really compliment you guys and what you're doing. Um, I think we tried to integrate that into the graduations on, on both houses uh, a little bit, uh, which was nice. Um, we're sharing that I can hear the students talking about it. We're sharing that with other districts tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, I, to me, this is one that's, you know, some of the national conferences that should be part of the, is that planned it as has well? Been, yeah. Okay. We presented a national conference. Even better. 
Yeah, I, I just think it's really, really good. And, uh, you know, you guys should feel really proud of it. But I, I just look back on this year. We've been doing this a while. Um, I, I don't know that I... I I don't know that I can recall a year like last year. Um, we really, we, we, we moved some big things. Teacher contract, Libertyville pool, breaking ground on the other stuff, continuing to move on the academic side. It's just, you know. Purchase property across really, the street. Purchase property across the street. We hope. Okay, cut down tree. Um, that's right, we but, hope. Uh, no, really, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. It, yeah. it ain't over until it's okay. over. <laughs> But uh, no, it was really f fantastic. So I just want to say thanks to everybody and the administrative team on the board um, for all the all the really hard work. It's been great. All good stuff. Okay. All right. Superintendent's report. Now okay. you don't have to cross anything out. Because yeah, I it's first. that's right. It's um, um, <coughs> we do have four uh, recognition things this evening. Uh, good news. Uh, D one twenty eight Special Olympics soccer team won the Division II State Championship at the Illinois Special Olympics State Summer Games held June 7th and 9th. So we will have them in. So that's another state championship for um, our Special Olympics program. Just so proud of those, Andy and those kids. Just amazing parents, supporters, and volunteers. I mean, awesome. Uh, VHHS seniors, uh, Caitlin Doler and Alexa Pomerantz, and LHS senior Jake Duffy were named to the Davy Herald's 2018-19 Lake County Academic Team. And LHS senior Lisa Zhao was named an honorable mention. The LHS Jazz Ensemble was selected to represent the state at the Illinois Music Education Conference to be held uh, January 29th to 31st at the Peoria Civic Center. Um, VHHS senior Brian Goroshenko was named the Illinois State Historical Society's first place winner in the 2009 Verna Ross Orndorff Scholarship Essay Competition. His essay will be published in an upcoming issue of Illinois Heritage Magazine. So congratulations um, to him. Uh, next on the superintendent's report, uh, we do want to remind uh, our uh, audience, as we always do, uh, between Pat and I, but. Um, our board does the yeoman's share of its work at two uh, committee meetings. Uh, tonight they happen to be prior to the board meeting. Usually they're two weeks before the board meeting. And so they have uh, very in-depth uh, discussions uh, about issues before they come to the board. And essentially at the board level you're seeing a, su a brief summary um, of those conversations. So we encourage you uh, to come to committee meetings. Um, we do have an interest in an issue. So. Um, LHS pool parking update. Uh, thought we were going to be ready spring 2019. We are not going to be ready spring of 2019, so we're shooting for July 2019. Which is still very good. I mean, you know, hats off to Gilbane for, I mean, they had nothing but bad weather to start right. this project. Exactly. Even the weather to be water. within a month on this project is Well, remember, we started in January with 50 below temperatures yeah, no, and we were trying to do some work. So, yeah. so make Crazy. sure you relay that message um, to Jeff. I, I could tell he was he was expressing a lot of frustration, but I mean, we go back to the winter time. Mm -hmm. We had the polar yeah. vortex, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, um, so you know, kudos to Gilvain for keeping the thing moving. So we're uh, we believe by the end of July, uh, everything will be done on the pool. We'll be able to jump in and actually um, use it. So a monthish um, later, and uh, parking. Uh, new parking at LHS? The parking lot is moving forward. They started with curb work outside um, and uh, the parking expansion. Uh, a little bit of groundwork to do there with some undercutting uh, to be start this week. Um, but we'll move forward with that. You know, so interior finishes are moving forward at a good, good pace and um, weather permitting. We're moving forward with the exterior stuff also. The older stop or anyone can actually pave, right? Uh, parking lot. There's a lot of work left to do outside. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a mess. Um, okay, uh, any other questions from the board on that? Uh, LHS, BHHS additions and renovations update. Those are, those are underway. The LHS renovation for the old pool demo is underway, so they're working on that. That's on schedule. Uh, the cafeteria demo is being worked on and done. That's on schedule. 
and then the cafe or the um, classroom and the gym additions are all currently under construction. So, just getting started, and uh, it's going well so far. Construction everywhere. Just you know, just one thought, Dan. Just to kind of help us all understand what, that these projects are on track. Could we put together for each project maybe just a one-page summary of some high-level milestones? High-level what? Milestones. So you know, for example. Um, yeah, I'll make it up, you know, the, the steel work is complete or the demo is complete. We just, whatever you guys think, you know, if for each project we had five or ten high level milestones that we knew roughly when they were supposed to be done and we're tracking when they are done, then when we say it's on track, it has a little bit more meaning to us because, you know, we sit there and say it's on, I can't tell you how many projects I've been part of. They've been on track up until the day they were supposed to launch. And then all of a sudden they're like six months late. So it would just be helpful if we had just a high level. Thing. And it's not something we're going to sit there and say, oh, you missed that, but just to give us sort of a picture. Does that make any Mark, sense? Mark, the update that Gelbane, for example, does for us, the weekly update that Gelbane does for us, I mean, that would might be a way to track that, right? My guess yeah, is it's, track track level, it's kind of a couple levels yeah, higher. Yeah, we, we've got a construction schedule that's extremely detailed, yeah, and you can that. summarize from those levels. Yeah, just for everything, I mean, I guess here's the way I put it, put this in the kind of, if we, if we were, if you were us, you know, what would you want to see? Because you know all that detail. I don't want to see all the construction level detail. We're not going to do that, but just a couple of high level things. I think it would just help. I think it'd be helpful because we got so many projects going on here right now that, you know, I think it'd be helpful for us to at least have an elevator speech if somebody asks, well, where are you out at the dance studio? And literally, go, all right, well, they completed the demo of the pool, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay. We have a uh, capital plan tab on the district yeah, website where Mary's been putting the update. Yeah, that's where the full updates are. All yeah. of the information. So it sounds like what you're asking for would dovetail very nicely with what Mary's already doing. Yeah, Gilbane does an up uh, does a really yeah. detailed. I can work with you to help create that. Gil <laughs> Gilbane. <laughs> All right, we need to put you back to work. Uh, the uh, Gilbane actually does a pretty detailed, um, you know, in our weekly summary where they would say, you know, this has been done, this has been done, but we could use for you for the board. You know, we this can modify. We can modify those weekly highlights. Update. Yeah, and I'm, so not, I'm not asking for pilot and hit those milestones. Yeah, on a monthly basis. Yeah, because if, if they get the steel and they actually say in the update, still went in this week or still will go in this week. Yeah. Well, well, for example, the kind of thing that I think would be important is, and Jeff was pretty good about saying, look, if we don't get the, you know, my word's not exactly his. If we don't get this demo done by end of the summer, there's going to be a lot of noise in the building. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You know what? I'd like to know that that, that demo is going to get done before the end of the summer because I don't want to have the kids distracted by all that noise. Yeah. So it's, you know. It's less of a. We uh, need to get the cafeteria re put together so it looks like it used to for this, whatever it is, stuff like that, that we can just understand the critical parts of the project. Okay. But less of what's actual, actually happening and more of the, these are the things that need to happen, like for the cafeteria to be open again. In yeah, the fall, and I think kind of through thing. the and eyes then, of the users of the buildings, yeah. even more so than the technical. So like, I don't really care so much about that the you know, HVAC systems in. As much as I care about, is the building going to be in the shape we need it to be in when we need it to be in? Because this is pretty disruptive to what's going on. I mean, certainly you try to walk around that building. Two years. Yeah, no, I, I think this and is. And they won't have any air until the kids come back. Yeah. So anything you could do to just create that picture. But I, I don't know why I didn't ask for it earlier. But okay. okay. Don't spend more than half an hour. Okay. 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 All right. Um, LHS, BHHS therapy dogs, Brian. You want to do a thumbnail? Summer. So both of our schools are looking to implement having therapy dogs um, for um, you know for next year. And again, a therapy dog is really not a service dog, but it's a, um, a therapy dog, an emotional support dog that can be utilized for a number of um, uh, different reasons, improving culture in the building, helping to decrease anxiety and worry <coughs> with our students and even our staff. Um, you know, the, just having a dog maybe just for a few minutes can positively impact our students, um, you know, that are maybe going through um, troubling times or some um, stressful times. Um, so our LSTs, our learning support teams, are looking to have a, um, a therapy dog available with one of our counselors at Vernon Hills High School, Tiffany Heinlein, and with the social worker, Greg Loika, at um, Libertyville High School. Um, currently, Vernon Hills High School and Tiffany 
she already owns a dog, and so we'll be, um, you know, their process are a little bit ahead in that they already have the dog in place. Some training has been done with Tiffany. Um, so some other members of our staff will also go through some therapy dog training. Um, Libertyville will be working with um, one of um, a, a private organization, InterQuest, to be able to um, purchase a dog with um, funds from um, some other organizations and from the uh, staff member that's actually going to own the dog. So they still have a little bit of work to do, you know, on you know purchasing the dog. But that dog will be, you know, hopefully introduced soon to, especially at Vernon Hills, to our community through some communications um, out to our staff members, students, parents, community, and hopefully in the fall be available at open houses in the school so that uh, you know, people can get to know the dog. Um, and then they'll work on, you know, scheduling time in support groups, individual time, and also classrooms three days per week um, for the dog. And, and dogs have been successful. We've used them a little bit, just having them come in, uh, you know, have haphazardly or in, in times of need in our schools. But there's other schools, uh, District 214, the main township schools, that, uh, and even private, uh, you know, schools or hospitals that use dogs um, to success. So we're looking forward to, you know, both schools you know, being able to move forward with having you know, therapy dogs available for <coughs> students and our staff. Okay, thanks, and, Brian. And just, to just to summarize that, no cost to the district. Just so no cost to the answer. district, yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, next on the uh, superintendent's report is IESB proposed resolution special education reimbursement. Uh, the Lake County superintendents and superintendents in other count, uh, counties I've written a, a draft letter that will uh, be uh, signed off on by hopefully all the districts uh, in each county and sent to the Illinois Association of School Boards. Uh, Jim Batson is our representative uh, for IESB. Um, and um, we're requesting that IESB uh, adopt the resolution and it will have an impact on special education reimbursement, uh, do some things that have uh, needed to be done in Illinois for a couple of years. Uh, in addition, our district itself is an individual district working uh, with Kelly Hartwig, our director of special education, will uh, take that framework of that letter and really tailor it to a letter from our district uh, individually to IASB. And the way this works then, um, this information will go to IASB and then IASB will consider um, that um, issue as it considers other resolutions for potential state legislation uh, in November at the tri-conference and Jim is our representative and comes back to our board and reviews um, all of the IESB uh, proposed resolutions before they vote uh, on them. So we're hopeful uh, in terms of that. There's no action for the board to take, uh, just their acknowledgement that it would be okay for me to move forward. Uh, next on the agenda for the superintendent's report is EdRed FY20 membership, and I, I know our board uh, just coming out of you know the budget season and legislation is familiar with EdRed, but EdRed stands for Education Research and Development, and it is really uh, the Chicago area suburban education advocacy lobby group. Um, there are just tons of districts in the Chicago area that are part of EdRed. Uh, they are an active part of our array of advocates and lobbyists in Springfield. They were very helpful this year, um, once again. So as a member of that group, our membership fee is $5,000, and we've had a long history with EdRed. So I would certainly recommend uh, that uh, we pay our membership fee and continue to be uh, active members of, of EdRed. So, um, Pat, we would uh, need a motion. Yep and then a vote on that. All right, so is there a motion to renew our EdRed membership for fiscal year 2020 in the amount of $5,000? I move so, to a re, uh, renew our membership in Second. Okay, any discussion? All right, roll call, please. Batson. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Grudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Grudy. Aye. All right, motion carries. Okay, uh, next on superintendent's agenda is semi-annual semi review of closed session minutes. Uh, twice a year we're required by law to go back and 
uh, review our closed uh, session minutes. And uh, after review uh, this time, we are not recommending the release of any closed session minutes at this time. Um, we would uh, need to vote uh, to not release those uh, if the board would like to have uh, further discussion about um, releasing any of those, uh, then Pat, you can take us into closed session and we can have that discussion. But our recommendation is that we do not release any of the closed session minutes at this time. All right, so let me ask the question first. Um, is there anybody that thinks we should go into executive session and discuss this? No? Okay, so then is there a motion to um, uh, continue to keep the uh, closed session minutes um, closed? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes, I have actually one question. Yeah, sure. sure. I assume our attorney is in concurrence with this and actually leads kind of his charge. Yeah. Right? Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Roll call, please. Carmichael? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Okay. So we will remove the executive session then from the agenda tonight. Okay. Boyle. Okay, uh, last on the superintendent's report tonight is our FOIA requests. So uh, we have two requests this month. Uh, the first requ request was received on 521.19 from Tim Ship, Tim Ship uh, 45 at yahoo.com. Uh, please provide the following information for your current, current superintendent, years of service as superintendent to your district, base salary in annual dollars, BOE paid, TRS contribution, if any, in annual dollars, BOP, uh, BOE health, paid health, or other insurance contribution, if any, in annual dollars. BOE paid retirement benefits, annuity or other, if any, in uh, annual dollars, number of annual sick days, number of annual vacation days. Other compensation benefits, if any, in annual dollars, please define the category of any other benefits uh, listed. Uh, this is a commercial request, um, and um, the response date was 523-19. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, this gentleman is actually a working administrator uh, doing superintendent um, search work. So uh, just seeking to do some comparative uh, data. And all of that's on the website, except for how many years you've been here. Yeah, it is. Well, and, and even that's there. Probably. Yeah, you can yeah. figure that out because all the contracts are there. So uh, they're looking at a broad base of um, to do some comparative data collection for a, a client district. Uh, 6419 uh, from Janie Jordan, Janie at dataresearchpartners.com in Austin, Texas. A listing of all Community High School District 128's employees first and last names, email address, title position, and primary campus department location. Um, Carol again did the follow up on this. Our response date was 6519 uh, and uh, only took uh, several minutes to complete that request. And Pat, with that, the superintendent's report is finished. Okay, thank you. All right, the consent vote agenda is listed. As uh, was mentioned, we reviewed this earlier this evening. So if I could ask for a motion to approve the consent vote agenda as listed. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All right, roll call, please. Grudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Carmichael. Aye. All right, motion carries. Uh, facility and Finance Committee, uh, Chairperson Huber. All right, so we had a long meeting uh, prior to the board meeting. And the first item we want to talk about is the resolution calling for a public hearing on the fiscal year 2020 budget. I believe the resolution was included in the packet. Mm -hmm. August 12th, 6 p.m. August 12th, 6 p.m. For those who want to come and talk with us about the budget. Right? So we need to right. probably have a formal motion for that resolution. Mm -hmm. So here, motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Questions? Seeing that. Okay. Paul? No. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Grudy? Aye. So we are going to be back here August 12th. We'll be back before then, but August 12th, 6 p.m. to talk about budget in this room. Yes? In this room. All, this room. all are invited. All are invited and encouraged to attend. Please. Uh, second item was the annual audit, Miller Cooper and Company <coughs> 2019 audit engagement letter. We discussed their audit engagement letter and the fee associated with the 2019 engagement. Uh, do we have any questions you want to? 
I hope it's just to engage Miller Cooper to do our annual uh, audit services, including uh, we'll probably have to have a single audit again. Um, so, fantastic. And again, the, I think that these were in the audit engagement, but they're in the forty to forty-five thousand range, depending on services. I think correct. Correct, and depending on kind of what ends up happening. So, so. great. I uh, can I have a motion to approve Miller Cooper and Company to perform our two thousand nineteen audit engagement as previously discussed. So moved. Second. Questions, comments? Uh, seeing none, Carol? Huber? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. All right, third item we talked about uh, school treasurer's bonds. We go out and, <clears throat> I'll let Dan explain it, but we go out and procure some bonds. Uh, if treasurer's bond, I have to be bonded according to state laws, the school. Uh, treasurer, and uh, we have had it provided by Gallagher for a number of years. Uh, we renegotiated with Gallagher for the same coverage, but at a cost less, less about $6,200. So uh, I would recommend uh, the board approve the treasurer's bond renewal with Gallagher in the amount of $24,900. Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Questions? Carol? Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Uh, next item we talked about was uh, Gil Bain, which is our uh, project manager for a significant number of projects that we have going on in the district. I think Dan briefly talked about standardizing or having a master contract, I believe you called it, and that way it uh, made everybody a little bit more efficient as we move forward. So. Yeah. Yep, it's the A134 that also incorporates an A201 uh, that we would recommend for approval to engage Gilbane in construction management professional services that will encompass uh, particularly the Vernon Hills uh, additions, renovations, and the NLHS old pool renovation that we're currently working on. So what, what is this, let's just be clear, what is this to approve though? Because we're not actually approving the contract tonight. We're recommending approval of the contract. Oh, that's right. right. It wasn't. Yeah. 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 yeah, it wasn't. There was a, it was yeah. red line. Yeah, things like that. You're right. Yeah. So the, the, we'll get a final one that's clean, but this is at least yeah. we got it on Thursday, right. and I wanted to include something that we had it. So mm -hmm. this is the one Linda's yeah. Linda's yeah. told us this is the right. This is the one you've been working on for six months. Six months, great. Yeah. Okay. And it eliminates the necessity to have to renegotiate contracts for each of the projects that we have on the board right now. Yeah. Correct. It's perfect. So we basically did the pre-work for any other contracts, that, any other work we would want to do. Um, and then as a new project comes up, we would just kind of negotiate those fine terms, and those board. fine costs. Yeah. So so board. Board. Yeah. Other questions regarding the master contract for your lane? Okay. We have a motion to approve as presented earlier. So moved. Second. Questions? Carol? Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Hassel, Huber, Aye. Lundstedt, Aye. Okay, great. So the next time we talked about was the athletic trainer, head of athletic trainer Libertyville uh, retired. So we talked about athletic training at both Libertyville <coughs> and Vernon Hills, and ultimately with the goal of potentially standardizing something down the line. But I think this year we need to do something at Libertyville to replace that individual. So we talked about that a little bit. Correct, yep, we did RFP, and uh, we're recommending approval of one full-time athletic trainer uh, for LHS to replace Ron Ross, who's retiring, uh, at a cost of $36,080 for uh, this next year's July 1st through June 30th. So you're only approving at the athletic over in here? As a rep, we'll do I'm, two separate, right? I'm rec I'm, well, and, and so what I'm, what I'm actually recommending is um, the board giving authority for the superintendent to designate to uh, enter into a contract that's a one-year agreement with Athletic Code for the full-time, one, one full-time athletic training services at a cost of $36,080 because we're still got to fine-tune some of the yeah. terms, like the legalese and stuff like that that we want to do. So that's, and then we're going to get to the strength training in a second. Okay, yeah, so this, just the, but this is just line. Athletic Code. The yep. first motion is just for the Athletic Code. Yeah, at 36. Okay. May I have that motion as presented? So the motion will be to authorize the superintendent or designee to 
sign the agreement as presented for that athletic for athletic athletic goal. I move to approve the superintendent to or designee to approve a contract to move forward with athletic goal for services for one year at Liberty Bell High School. And you want a thirty-six thousand and two hundred dollars. Right. Thirty-six thousand eighty dollars. Okay. Second. Question. Okay. Batson. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Grudy. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Huber. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Grudy. Aye. Okay, great. Right now, are you all student? Yep. Also, yeah. would uh, recommend the board uh, authorize superintendent to need to enter into a contract with. Illinois Bone and Joint Institute for the Strength Performance, Strength Conditioning, strength conditioning Services um, at a cost of $35,000 per school. Uh, so total cost of $70,000 for the district uh, for one year uh, beginning July 1st through June 30th. So moved. Second. Questions? Okay. Um, Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Grudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. And when we've executed those contracts, we'll report back to you. Okay. All right, anything else for facilities and finance? See none? Okay, we're done. Thanks. Okay, good job. All right, program and personnel, Chairperson Batson. Thank you, Dr. Grudy. We have a couple items here, three items to be exact. Of, uh, series of four board policies for second reading adoption of one under the heading of Board of Education is policy 2 colon 2 the powers and duties of the Board of Education <coughs> Indemnif if, indemnification I knew I was going to blow it up uh, the next two are under the heading of operational services and that's policy 4 colon 110 transportation and 4 colon 150 facility management and building programs and the fourth one is under the uh, heading of instruction, which is policy 6 colon 1 5, school accountability. These were reviewed and actually uh, read in for first reading last month, so this is just for the adoption. Nothing has changed since then, so we have a motion to adopt these policies. So, so moved. No. Second. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, roll we'll call, please. Carmichael? Aye. Grudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, item B is a D-128 agreement pertaining to regulation of traffic and parking, and this is for both uh, Libertyville and Vernon Hills uh, intergovernmental agreements. Uh, anything we want to comment on this for the record so that the public understands. It merits some clarification for the public yeah. to understand yeah. that the police have a role. Yeah, right. so if you look at this intergovernment agreement, we already have one currently in place at um, Vernon Hills High School with uh, the police department. It was a five-year agreement in um, that, that was signed in 2000 with three five-year rollovers. So basically, it's essentially a 20-year agreement. So it's coming up for renewal, but um, to kind of um, bring both schools in line with some, you know, current procedures. We'll do them both at the same time, which saves us a little bit of um, attorney costs. Um, so I presented both of um, disagreements to uh, Vernon Hills and Libertyville. Vernon Hills is still reviewing some of the language, but they, they believe that, you know, they'll approve it. Libertyville has, you know, approved the language that we're proposing. It gives the village of Vernon Hills and the village of Libertyville Police Department and actually our SRO, who's a member of the police department, the ability to ticket people that are parked illegally or not following our posted speed limit signs in our parking lot. They give us suggestions also on what we should have in our parking lot, although we have final say and control over sign signage in the parking lot because we're the ones paying for it. So, but it's just, it's, it, it, it helps us that you know we can enforce some of the laws that we regulations that we want in our park lot to keep it safe for our students and their parents. Okay. And this contract's on file with the uh, Lake County. Once it once everything is signed by both, I will ensure that we send it to the Lake County recorder of deeds um, to make sure that it is on file, so that if anyone ever disputes a ticket that they got in our parking lot, Lake County's got a record of it. So it has to be 
the way this is set up, it has to go to Lake County and be on file. So, and anyone can do a public search of that and find it either electronically or go into Lake County and find this document. We have a motion for you. I move to approve the D-128 agreement pertaining to regulation of traffic and parking. Second. Any further questions or comments or discussion? You know, I have a question. So, obviously, this is a, still a village ticket. So, it's not something that goes like, to the floor, goes to the village. Right. The village enforces it. They have to go through mm -hmm. the county kind of system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do have one question. So, this is an agreement with Lake County, and sometimes we have Lake County Sheriff's Police on campus for events, football games, whatever. Most of the people we have on campus, for us, it will always be Vernon Hills or the police. Or Liberty Liberty yeah. So we don't have an agreement with Lake County. They would not be able to come yeah, on. Agreement with here. Vernon Hills and Liberty yeah. Liberty Right, right. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, roll call, please. Rudy? Aye. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Okay, motion passes. One final thing, uh, it's the Illinois E-Plan Consolidated District Plan. The um, Consolidated District Plan, which we are asking you to approve this evening, is phase one of a three-part uh, plan by ISBE to consolidate the process for um, applying for and administering uh, federal title grants. And uh, so this, this phase one is really a series of planning questions that the district is required to answer for Title II, Title IV, and IDEA uh, Part B grants. Uh, so we've completed the planning questions which are part of the plan and are asking you to approve that plan so that we can hit submit uh, to ISBE um, in preparation for actually submitting our grant application. In later phases, those grant applications will also be consolidated and we'll have a dashboard to access, a single dashboard to access information related to each of those grants, which are now separate applications. Okay. Uh, can we have a uh, motion, please? I move to approve the consolidated district plan. Second. Okay, any questions, comments, clarification? No? Okay. We'll go first. Hessel? Aye. Huber? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Grudy? Aye. The motion passes. Do you want to one, one, one yep. other thing before yep. we leave. We, Reed alluded to this before, but we're hosting a really, <coughs> we think, powerful conference tomorrow. So would you just take a minute sure. for the public? And this connects to daring and, and the work that's been done on daring that will be done in the future. So. <coughs> Um, Rita, why don't you spend a few minutes and just let the board know what we're doing sure. tomorrow. Sure. Uh, several of us had, have worked on designing uh, this uh, daring conference, and it started really as a conversation um, that Mary has had with her colleagues in public relations in other districts, and I've had with my colleagues as well, um, discussing the power of our daring mission and the way that we've implemented that daring mission to make it live and breathe. Uh, Pat was mentioning earlier, um, to really define that the work that we do and to provide a unifying purpose for us. So as part of those conversations, we decided to host our own conference and invite other districts to attend, um, to both learn from our process and to share uh, strategies that are being used at other districts. Um, the conference will have six separate sessions that are aligned to the acronym DARING and participants will choose from um, those sessions and attend a session in the morning and a session in the afternoon well, where they'll learn from a team of D128 presenters in each of those sessions, we'll learn our strategy, we'll share some examples of how we're implementing in D128, we'll learn from participants in the room, and then they'll have an opportunity to design something for implementation in their own setting. Jim Batson is one of our participants tomorrow. We look forward to his, his <coughs> joining us. Uh, and then at the end, we'll have a showcase of the designs that are um, developed during each of the sessions. So we have um, a total of 50 participants, including um, those who are coming from our own district. Um, we have a principal from Missouri who's traveling here to join us, uh, follows us on Twitter, and learned of the conference and is, is attending. 
Um, so we're excited that this premier event gained traction and we've got people coming to us to learn together. Um, Rita, what are some of the other districts that are coming? We have a large contingency from Glenbard, uh, Fenton, uh, Lake Forest is attending, um, District 99, Downers Grove, Downers Grove um, uh, Webster, Niles has a large content contingency as well. So. And somebody from Missouri. Yes, and someone from Missouri. Said, yeah. So, um, it's we're just excited about it, and we hope that it will grow really from cool. here. We're kind of happy that it stayed 50 for this year because we're using the district office here rather than one of the two high schools with everything going on in the schools. Yeah, so next year would be well. the appropriate time for the conference to grow and attract a additional attendee. Sounds great. Is it a one-day conference? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. our hashtag is yes. DaringCon19. <laughs> so thanks to Rita and Mary for their work on this and all of the 128 staff uh, that is Brian actually is participating Brian, as a presenter that's, as well. That's, that's, that's actually presenting. So it's very, it's, it's very cool. Great job. Very daring. Yeah. Um, our uh, educators who are presenting are also very excited about the opportunity. For some of them, this is the first time they're presenting at a conference at all. Some of our relatively new teachers are joining in as well as uh, experienced teachers in presenting. So they're excited about the opportunity. And you know, it's especially cool when you know, here we are, not the middle, but the early part of the summer, and these people are coming in doing this extra, extra work, which mm -hmm. I think is sort of a testimony to the kind of people that we have working here. You know, there was one other thing I didn't mention that I thought was one of the highlights of the year. I think I got my ears right this one's gone so so fast, but the Berlin trip. Yeah. And and the way that was presented, I mean, it seems like forever that we presented that. All right. But that just that summer. that tied in some of the daring stuff and was really I think just one of the highlights of the year. I mean, I think it's kinda of end of last year, beginning this year, but that it's trip a, it's was a model really, that really worthwhile. <coughs> We are, it's a model that we are replicating, and um, actually the um, company that has sponsored this tour has actually taken some of our design features and is incorporated in this tour that includes teachers of the year from across the country. And so they're using our strategy of attending the conference with a driving question, some kind of problem of practice that they want to solve in their district. And while on tour, the educators explore that question, develop a project, and pledge to implement it in their classrooms. We'll provide an update next year at one of our ed presentations because the impact of the projects that our educators have designed, um, the, the impact is uh, being felt across both of our high schools and in other parts of the country and world as well because of this um, collaborative design process that we included in that trip. So. Daring to excel. Yeah. An outstanding. Nice job. Okay. Anything else? Other other, so that concludes the uh, theme. Okay, uh, see you all. Yeah, we had our quarterly meeting in June, and as we talked about last meeting, um, we were voting on the budget, proposed budget, which was passed. There you go. I mean, Dan has all the same. <coughs> okay, I just mean nothing. Do you want to mention the tri conference in November? Over the date of that, I know we're in the back of it. Uh, uh, everybody, everybody got it. Everybody know what it is. Yeah, twenty second, November twenty second and twenty fourth, two thousand nineteen. Um, yeah, I'll be representing okay. us at the uh, delegate assembly uh, again this year. So, anybody else who wants to go is welcome to go. We'll make sure Carol knows so she knows who to register. Yeah, it's always nice to have at least a few of you down there, and certainly to be able to spend um, some time. Uh, outside the district with you. Um, Do we have people from here presenting from 128? Are you doing a daring thing there? No. 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 Yeah, it's presenting. Okay. You know, I think if there's any of these, you know, sometimes it's a little hard to tell um, which of these would be more or less valuable, or sometimes the, what the description is isn't what actually happens, which I found uh, a couple years ago. That which was still a good, you know, Conference. It was just a, like, oh, they took us. <laughs> Coming and talking about governance and policy. Um, <laughs> so those Using the meetings, they had to sign up so far in advance. They just, had, yeah, yeah. change their mind. Professional development chair standpoint, when they scheduled those so far in advance. Yeah, yeah. 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 so yeah. like nearly a year ahead of time. The abstract title was doing a year before. Yeah. Well, if there's anything on here that, because sometimes it's hard to know, like, well, I've been to that one or I've been to that one, but there might very well be some of these that would be really valuable, or maybe they all would be. 
And some of them, depending on which one it is, they actually have a rotating, they have a rotating thing. So you can go to the same one yeah. three years, and for three, it's a oh, three-year rotation, okay. gotcha. so it'd be different. So, so it would be different. One. All right. It could be. It okay. depends on which one. Well, and the, and the other thing, remember, this is actually the ultimate board professional development. This conference is really designed for school board members. Um, so. Uh, it's great when you have the opportunity to take advantage of that, uh, as all of you had at, at some, well, a couple of you are newer since the last uh, time around, but um, yeah, we'd certainly encourage you to do that. Um, and even though the Tribune takes some pot shots uh, at this conference every year, this is a place to get, you know, some additional uh, training and an opportunity and exposure to some other things on the district and it's a great, it is a very, very good conference for school board members. I found sometimes when you have, you know, because many times they have you kind of break out into a, your round table group yeah. and you're discussing things with people from such different districts, that that's really fascinating. You really find that, um, you know, it's just, it, um, really, you know, shows how different, uh, which we all know, but it, when you're actually talking to people from other school boards and they tell you some of the things that they're dealing with. Yeah, oh, I, right. I completely agree. That was yeah. my experience over a couple yeah. years, several years ago. I guess when I had lunch it, after one of the workshops with a lot of people from downstate, mm -hmm. and had some very interesting conversations yeah. about. They like usually have some really good keynote speakers too. Yeah. Some yeah. national. Well, you yeah. probably would have speakers. some yeah. in, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. I may be presenting on something. Okay. Anything? All right. So we are not doing agenda items eight and nine since we don't need to do that. Um, is there anything else? Okay, if not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. Good night, everybody. Aye.